All right, good afternoon, Doc D. Um, so we're, this is, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pre-record this lecture. Um, this is uh, the lecture on fasteners, their selection and use, as you can see from the screen. Um, I shot this yesterday uh, for the class, and it just, it really was not a very good video. And uh, so uh, I'm going to do this, and I'll upload a couple of pictures uh, of some different things, and uh Hopefully this will be better. I was having a, a lot of problems getting the uh, the camera to focus, and so it just it it really was a, an atrocious video. So here we are. We're going to do this, and then uh, if there are any questions, you know, uh, once you come off quarantine, we can sit down and do a one-on-one -on -one to to get any information that you need. Uh, and and I'm going to do this uh, in the current fashion here because I'm going to be flipping back and forth between different things and, and all that. So here we go. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. All right. So one of the most important things that you want to think about when you are selecting fasteners is that, you know, what what am I actually joining? Uh, am I joining dissimilar materials? Uh, and what are those materials? Wood, metal, plastic, drywall, concrete, because they all pose um, specific things to think about uh, when we're selecting fasteners and, and the purpose of this lecture is not to get into the, the minute detail of that but just to kind of give you an exposure to fasteners and again give you a license to learn uh, so you know some of the common things that we'll see uh, as engineers is that you know we're going to be joining wood metal plastic you sometimes even drywall because we always get those other projects because we know how to do things and then of course concrete um, a lot of people think oh I'll never mount something concrete yeah you will uh, it's just a it's just a fact of life all right so materials are important and then here's where we really come in and that you know when we're selecting a fastener you know there there are reasons that we're selecting a, an appropriate fastener and so those things are, you know, how much stress and, and, and what forces are we expected, right? And so, you know, is it a tensile strength that's or a tensile load that's being applied to it? Is it a shear load? Uh, is there abrasion? Uh, you know, the, it runs the whole gamut, you know. And we also need to be thinking about, you know, what environment is this going to exist in? You know, is it something that we need to worry about corrosion? Is it in an actual uh, acidic environment? Uh, so forth and so on. And then, um, so we have the, uh, we're kind of lucky in that, you know, in the United States, we, we use Imperial SAE or metric, um, probably roughly 50-50, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the slide, um, but we need to know, you know, what, what standard we're going to use, whether we're going to use Imperial units, which is, you know, um, uh, fractional sizes, three-eighths, a quarter, half-inch, three-quarter, or whether we're using metric. Um, so end-user, a lot of times we'll drive that, uh, you know, if you're doing something for NASA, uh, it's going to be metric. Um, a lot of things that are done research-wise are going to be metric. Uh, if it's uh, just something that you do yourself, um, then, you know, I tend to default to the thing that I'm most familiar with and for me that's Imperial units that's what I've been using for the longest time and so um, but a as engineers we need to we need to be able to switch hats and go from using Imperial to metric and metric to Imperial uh, but what we w do want to do is that you know if we are creating something we want to stay with one standard or the other don't don't intermix uh, metric and, and fractional sizes because that that just creates a bunch of headaches All right, so how do we actually specify a fastener? Um, and so uh, what I've got here is a couple different call-outs. Uh, so we've got a quarter slash 20 uh, times 1 inch SHCS, and then below that I've got M6 1 by 40 millimeter. And so the formatting on these is the same, uh, whether they be... Uh, metric or imperial fractional units uh, in that we're going to specify uh, the nominal diameter meaning the, the uh, largest diameter and so for the quarter 20 
it is a quarter inch, so 0.25. And so, uh, and, I, and I say nominal because most of the time a quarter inch bolt is not actually a quarter inch. It's just a little bit smaller, uh, but it's, it's the nominal size of that. All right, so then we've got the dash 20. Well, the 20 refers to the pitch. All right, and, and so the pitch can mean a lot of different things in engineering. On fasteners, we're talking about how many threads per inch. And so if I were to take a pair of calipers and I were to set it at one inch and then lay that on a screw and I could count the number of um, uh, threads that I see, all right, and in this particular instance, a quarter 20 means that there would be 20 inches or excuse me, 20 threads per inch. All right, and then the, the times one inch uh, basically is talking about the length. And the length is only the length of the actual uh, threaded portion. Or uh, in the case of a, a, a screw or a, a bolt that's not fully threaded, it is the length that goes underneath the uh, head. All right. So it's not the overall length of the bolt, but it is the length of, that will go through material, if that makes sense, because your, your head's going to ride on top of the material. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so M6 by 1 by 40. Um, so metric, uh, they also have pitches as well. Uh, so the M6 it basically means it's a 6 millimeter, and then the 1 is a, is a, a, a pitch for uh, metric threads. And obviously, there's going to be more than one thread per inch. Um, so uh, metric pitches are a little different. And typically, there's like 0 0.7, 0 0.75, 1, 1 1.5, so forth. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, different um, pitches here in a minute as far as when we talk about coarse and fine threads. And then the times 40 millimeter, that's you know how long it is. And again, same thing the amount of the uh, screw or bolt that actually goes through whatever is being fastened. The head is not included in that. All right, so let's go to the next. All right, so here we've got um, just a couple things. Uh, I want to, hopefully this will work. Control click, maybe, shift click. Not going to work. All right, so I'm going to... Uh, Again, I apologize. Uh, so it's I don't need draft sight. Close, you silly thing. All right. Throw this over here. Joby. Okay. So here we go. If uh, McMiss is uh, on McMaster Cars website, and uh, they, that's who I do most of my buying with as far as fasteners and materials, uh, simply because they have such a large supply of it. And, you know, most of it is you purchase it today, they ship it today, and I get it tomorrow. All right. And so here we're just looking at fastening and joining. And so, you know, we've got, I don't know, probably 25 different um, things that fall up in that. And so we're talking about screws and bolts right now. So I'm just going to click on that. And so here we get, you know, wow, there's a whole lot of those. All right. And again, so this uh, is not going to expose you to everything. It's just opening your eyes that, you know, this is really um, a large thing. And if we look over here, um, here's some of the different head types. And this is by far not an exhaustive <laughs> list of different head types. All right, but so, and then, you know, if I click on here and I drill down, and let's say that I'm interested in this saga head uh, cap screw, all right, and then I drill down, and uh, maybe we're going to get somewhere. There we go. All right, and so now we're looking at, look how many of them there are, all right, and so here we got... Um, uh, 1 16th inch, fully threaded, thread spacing fine. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the diameter 0 0.96, 0 0.096, 96,000. Drive side, tensile strength. All right. All right. Okay. So let me minimize that and bring up my other thing. 
There we go. All right, and so I went ahead and I drilled down on the screws there just like uh, I, I said it would. And All right, screws and bolts. Is there a proper naming convention? And, and this is there's probably a lot of different ways to look at this. And to, and to me, uh, a bolt annotates something that's larger in size. And so, uh, you know, pretty much anything that's a quarter inch and below I consider to be a screw. And then... Uh, up from that, you know, I consider it a bolt, and you know, that will vary a little bit. But generally speaking, uh, the larger size the fastener, you know, consider a bolt. Smaller, consider those as screws. All right. Here. All right. So, some common thread types. Uh, most of what we're going to see um, are what's called a 60-degree thread or a conventional thread. All right, and so that 60 degree basically is a 30 degree included angle, and, and I'm going to pull up this thread angle thing from Wikipedia here in just a moment um, to uh, to shed a little bit of light on that. Before I do that, though, uh, so any thread can be right-handed or left-handed, and basically what that means is that you know one of the old adages that you know lefty loosey and righty tighty. Well, that's based off of a right-handed thread, meaning that if I move move the nut in a uh, clockwise direction, it's it's going to tighten, um, and if I move it in the left-hand direction, then it's going to loosen. Well, that's based off of a right-handed thread. Uh, now we do have the capability of getting just about any thread uh, in a left-handed version. Uh, so you know, a left-hand a, a, a counterclockwise movement would tighten that, and a clockwise movement would loosen it. All right, and, and there's sometimes there are reasons that we want that. Uh, if we have a shaft that's moving in a clockwise direction. Uh, we'll probably put a left-handed uh, thread on that so that the nut will um, tighten as the shaft is moving, right? Because what we don't want it to do is the shaft is moving and, and the continual start and stop will loosen up that bolt, right? So we want it so that as it starts, it's actually applying a, a closing torque on that, uh, if that makes sense. Um... And of course, you know, if you have a right-handed thread on a bolt, then you need a right-handed thread on the nut. I think that probably goes without saying, but I'll just go ahead and say it anyhow. Uh, let's see, can I get this to go? Uh, all right, let's see if I can get this one to come up. All right. All right, so this is Wikipedia, um, and, and so this is just kind of a, a useful thing for you to see is that there are a whole lot of different types of thread forms. All right, uh, so most V-threads that you're going to uh, see are, again, called V-threads, and they're a 60-degree uh, included angle, and so it's 30 degrees on each side. All right, so that's that's the most common that we're going to see. Um there are, and, and this is not an exhaustive list, there are a whole lot more different types of thread types than this. Um, so I'm going to go down here to the Atme thread because I actually had that on my, called out on my slide. And so an Atme thread we will typically see not on fasteners, but we will see it uh, on transformation or tr transference of movement, right? If I want to move something along, I can use what's called an Atme thread, which is... Um, it's, it's almost a square thread, and you can look down here at as an actual square thread, all right, uh, versus, oops, well, that's not what I wanted to do. Ah, good grief. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so that versus the, uh, the Acme thread. All right, so a little bit of difference, and, and again, so... Acme threads are pretty common uh, in the engineering field, and again, because, you know, we're trying to uh, make lateral movement with a rotary movement, uh, with a, yeah, lateral movement out of a rotary movement. And so it does really good at transferring uh, a fairly significant amount of force, uh, a lot more force than you can apply by hand. All right. And, and again, that was not an exhaustive list. I mean, there's probably thousands of different thread, thread forms when you start really looking into it. Uh, but most of what you're going to see is the 60-degree uh, conventional thread. Okay, let's see. Um, 
So I kind of alluded to this earlier in that there are different thread classifications and then I don't include this on here but there are also fit classifications and they um, they talk about how how snug a fit a, a nut will be on an actual threaded shaft. All right, um, it's really beyond the scope of what we're trying to talk about here. Just know that there are different classes of fit, from exceedingly tight to you know so loose that I can just spin it with my finger and it'll go three or four turns. Right. Um, so typical thread classifications is that we'll have, and I'm going to talk first about the metrics, and that we have fine and coarse. All right. So fine means that it typically it has it's going to have more threads per inch course means it has less threads per inch and so you might say well why would you why would why would you make a difference why, why do you I care um, so typically fine threads uh, we'll see those in um, things that have a lot of vibration um, because we've got more threads in contact so it has more friction uh, so they tend to stay in place a little better than say a coarse thread all right uh, another reason that I might use a fine threaded bolt is that maybe I have a very small cross section. Maybe we've got, um, we'll, we'll say uh, the, the Luon that we've been using, if we'll say that we were using uh, an aluminum sheet that's that thick. And so if I were to use a coarse threaded bolt, say a quarter 20, which has 20 threads per inch, uh, if you do the math on that, and let me do the math on that, uh, for Let's see here. So one inch divided by twenty point oh five. All right. So there are um, yeah for every fifty thousand, there's a thread. All right. So if we're using something that um, is only a hundred thousandths, then I would only have two threads in engagement. All right. So. In that case, I'd want to use something that's a fine, uh, uh, a fine thread classification, uh, because I'm going to have more threads in engagement, and that's a that's a very common thing. Is that you know we have something with a very small cross-sectional area, and so we want to have maximal uh, thread engagement. So we'll use a fine uh, pitch thread. All right. Uh, so going back up here, thread classifications: UNC, UNF, and MPT. These are imperials. Uh, so UNC stands for Unified National Course, and so again, so there are less threads per inch, and then Unified National Fine would be the next one, and then NPT is a national pipe thread, all right, and this is used on again pipe, and so. Um, we will see this on occasion, depending upon what area of engineering you're going to be working in. But really, I mean, any any type of engineering that you're going to be involved with, you're going to have piping of some sort, uh, whether it be through pneumatic controls, hydraulic controls, cooling systems, whatever. You're going to have pipe, all right? And so National Pipe Thread uh, is used to designate the threads on pipes and their union. All right, and so uh, major difference with MPT uh, is that if I have a quarter inch MPT, it's not a quarter inch in diameter. Um, it's for a, a quarter inch pipe, and that's an ID, and so it's actually much, much bigger. Um, and the MPT threads are also uh, a tapered thread so that uh, when I thread it, uh, the part that is going to mate first with its uh, uh, with that has the internal thread, the internal thread uh, as it mates is going to be wider, and then the male thread that goes in, it's going to be it's the smallest dimension as it goes. And so as they screw together, those opposing uh, tapers act to create uh, a better seal. All right, a lot of different ways to identify um, threads and uh, yeah, threads or bolts or whatever. Yeah, you know, a lot of times you you'll come into a project midway and you know there's bolt nuts and bolts laying around and you know how do I how do I know what's what? Uh, if you just look at them, um, there's there it's hard to tell just visually. Uh, now, people who've been doing this for a while 
you know, I, I can look at a quarter 20 bolt and say, yeah, that's a quarter 20 uh, or a, a 1032 or whatever. Um, but you're probably not at that. And so, you know, if you if it you didn't bring it out of the box, <laughs> then you need to verify what it actually is. All right. And so, so gauging the thread, uh, I'll include a picture of um, our little box that has a bunch of different um, screws and bolts and different fastener types and, and stuff in there. And in the lid of the box, I have a bunch of nuts that are labeled as whatever they are. So, uh, 832, 1024, quarter 20, uh, 5 sixteenths, 18. And so, if I have a known um, nut, I can screw in uh, a bolt into that. And, you know, if it screws in more than a turn easily, then, you know, that's, that's what that is. All right. Uh, a caveat to that, a disclaimer, is that if you have something that is pretty close, um, a lot of times you can get the bolt to start, uh, but it won't go more than, say, you know, a quarter to a half of turn. And a lot of people, uh, especially if they don't know, they go, oh, well, it started in there, so it must be, and then they get a wrench on it, and they'll just turn it in. And, and you can do that, but you will have a hard time getting that back out. And uh, if you if you do get it back out, I mean, that that fastener is done. All right. So uh, there is a thing called a thread checker, which basically um, is a uh, let's see let's see if I can pull one up. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So I have one of these. Let me pull this up. And so what it is is that on the back side of it here is a place where I can screw in a bolt to say, oh, is that actually this size? And then on the other side of it, here we have, oops, where'd it go? Ah, get back here. Here I can screw a nut onto that to verify that that nut is actually it. So if you're looking at the picture here, you know, it starts off with a 632, 832, 1024, 1032, quarter 20, quarter 28. So each one of these is marked. And so, you know, we look at the basic size of what it is that we have in our hand, whether it be a nut or a bolt. And we go to a correspondingly sized uh, thread checker piece here, and we test the fit. All right, so easy enough. All right, let's go back here. Um, and then, of course, you know, we need to measure what the length is. We need to know uh, how long that is. And so uh, I see it a lot of times that people will just grab whatever whatever screw or bolt will fit through, and they don't worry about, you know, how much is left over or even if there is anything. All right. And so we need to think about, um, you know, what length do we actually need. All right. And so, you know, if it's going to, if we're joining two pieces with a... Uh, a screw and a nut, then you know we've got to have enough of the bolt through the backside in order to screw the nut on. Uh, and with that being said, you know it's it's really considered poor form to have you know a, a, a nut and bolt screwed together and then you know have a whole bunch of extra bolt extending past the backside of the nut. You know, grab the appropriate size for what you need. All right, and then identifying the head. If you go to uh, your local hardware store and you look at the little screwdriver kits, there are a ton of different driver sizes. And, and I'm going to click on uh, some of those here in just a minute. Uh, but there are a ton of them. And so, you know, when you're looking at your faster, you know, you need to have a way to drive this thing. So make sure that you have the appropriate driver for whatever head that you actually have. All right, let's see. Um, I think that this one has what we're looking for, maybe. Let's see here. All right, so uh, this isn't the one I was actually looking for, but uh, this we'll, we'll talk about this too. So these are some real common drive types, right? And so, you know, we got a hex bolt, real common to see. Um, here's the different drive types, Phillips or a slotted or what's called a standard, uh, which is just a straight bar. 
uh, a combo. Uh, you'll see that a lot of times on wood screws and stuff. Um, uh, we've got the Frierson and Posi Drive, which are basically a modified Phillips. Uh, we have a hex socket. Uh, so most of what I do, I use the hex socket because uh, they're, they're driven with Allen wrenches, and so I can put a lot of force on them. Uh, they have a fairly low profile, and they look professional. And then, you know, you, the, the star or the Torx is pretty common these days as well. All right, looking over here at the head styles, um, and again, this is not an exhaustive list. So we've got hex heads, pan heads, which is this rounded profile, a flat head, which is decided to be uh, countersunk into the workpiece, a round head, an oval head, a truss head, socket head, and then button heads, which are basically a modified socket head. And so it's, it's essentially a pan head um, that's a socket head. All right, and, and again, you know, this, um, this does, doesn't even scratch the surface of what's actually out there and available. Um, so let's see. Um, let's talk about, uh, actually, I'll just leave that up for now, and I'll come back to it. All right, so we got that. Um, let's see. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So this is uh, off of Bolt Depot and basically talks about the grades of bolts. All right. So we need to be always cognitive of what type of bolt that we're putting in there. As I talked about on one of those early slides, you know, what kind of forces is it going to be subjected to? How much forces? And then, you know, corrosion resistance, whatever. All right. And so this is just a, a handy little chart that gives us um, a, some information about different grades of uh, fasteners that we can use, right? And so here we have the Imperials. All right. And so. Uh, the low carbon is the least expensive, all right, and they really are a very soft bolt. And when I say very soft, that's a relative term because they have a minimum tensile strength of 120,000 uh, pounds per square inch, all right, and that's really quite a bit. Um, but, you know, uh, we can exert a heck of a lot of uh, force uh, with a uh, wrench or a socket, uh, and you can actually twist or. Uh, that was the that was the grade five. I'm sorry, sixty thousand or, or seventy four thousand uh, for the the low carbon. Um, so grade two, you know, no markings on the head. And again, this is when you go to the hardware store. This is typically what you're going to see is the grade two low carbon. All right. And so while this sixty thousand or seventy four thousand really sounds like a lot, um, you can exert that much force with a, a large wrench, and you can twist a head right off of one of these. All right, so the medium carbon, um, you'll see these quite often. A lot, of, a lot of places will actually carry the medium carbon as opposed to the low carbon. Um, and as you can see, that you know the tensile strength doesn't quite double, but it's close. All right, and so basically, it's a little bit more durable of a bolt, bolt all right, or screw. And then grade eight uh, is a high carbon steel, and so these are the ones that are designed for. Um, strong loads, whether it be under tensile or shear um, or whatever, all right? Uh, now, all of these, they really don't have any resistance to corrosion, right? And so that's a factor that we always need to think about, all right? Um, this grade A325, I have no no experience with that at all. Um, so stainless steel is available, all right? And these are used in places where, you know, they're exposed to the elements or they could be exposed to a, a lightly acidic acid uh, environment or, or something like that, right? Um, the downfall to using stainless is that it's about double the price of, you know, even the, the grade 8, the high carbon steel. All right. Um, you probably won't see, I, I can't say that, you know, in all my years of doing this that I've ever seen an actual aluminum uh, nut and bolt. Uh, you just don't see it. Uh, I mean, they're there, but you don't see it. Uh, silicone bronze, okay, these are designed uh, to be out in the weather. All right, talking about metrics, 
you know, they have a similar classification. Uh, the major difference is, is that with the metric bolts, um, they use a number designation. And the lower the number, uh, the lower the uh, hardness or tensile strength. All right, and notice that the tensile strength is given in uh, MPGs. All right, and so, you know, again, this is a metric term. All right, so 8.8 .8 is the medium, 10.9 uh, is a hardened, and then the really hard is the 12.9. And again, typically on these, uh, the price goes up with hardness because there's actual, uh, you got a better quality of materials that goes into it, and then, you know, they also go through different processes to uh, make them hard. All right, so the last little thing I want to talk about on here is how threads are made. Um, and so uh, there are um, a couple videos there on roll forming, uh, which is how most of your screws and bolts are, are made in the factory. Um, what we will do here is we typically use what's called a tap and die. All right, and so let me pull up uh, tap. Let's do quarter 20 tap. So I'll just Google search that, and here we go. Bam. Global industrial, whatever. All right, so what we see is that we've got this uh, high carbon steel. Um, sometimes they're carbide, sometimes they're tool steel, uh, and then sometimes they're what's called a high speed steel, which is another type of tool steel. And so what we see is that we have our thread profile is ground into this. And then you see these little clearance areas here. These are um, basically troughs so that as this is turned into the workpiece, little chips are generated by each of these little tooth profiles. And these little hollow grooves give those, chi those chips a place to go, right? And so um, the process is, is that we look at... Um, we obviously need a hole if this is a quarter 20 all right um, we don't want to drill the hole a quarter inch because then there'd be nothing to thread right and so we have to figure out what size hole that we need that is uh, a, a nominal diameter so that this will actually start to fit in there right and that it can cut a uh, at least a 75 well, 75 percent is typically what we look for engagement of the thread uh, but also have enough so that this can turn easily into the work. All right, and so uh, that drill that we're looking for is called a tap drill, and there is a thing called a tap drill chart. Um, I have a couple here in the shop, and so if you have questions, I'll point it out to you and show you how to use it. Uh, but so we, we drill that tap drill, and then we will turn this into our work uh, to create a thread profile. All right, and so we can also do a, uh, let's do quarter 20 die. And so uh, a die is the opposite of that in that we have a piece of uh, rod that we are going to thread this on. And it works exactly the same way, only we're cutting external threads on with this on the rod, whereas with the tap, we were cutting internal threads. All right. And uh, we, uh, we probably won't get into that in this actual class, uh, but um, you know, it's something that as you progress through your projects, uh, you will be cutting threads. And so uh, I invite you to watch the YouTube videos on roll forming. It's kind of mesmerizing to watch. And, um, so anyhow, that's, uh, that's the bulk of the presentation uh, for the uh, in-person presentation. I actually had uh, the little boxes with some different fasteners and stuff for you to look at. Um, and there's just no good way for me to, to show those with any detail whatsoever. Uh, so when you come back off of uh, quarantine, come and see me and we'll sit down. And we'll spend a few minutes kind of walking through uh, the different other fasteners that we haven't discussed. God bless. Doc D out. Bye.